hello hello everybody um hopefully uh everything will go off without a hitch you know i've, I've thrown everybody off the internet here at the house um but i'm telling you ever since the eclipse today technology has been going it hasn't decided that what it wants to do it don't know what it wants it don't know what it likes and um just sometimes it decides it doesn't like me uh but uh i do want to go ahead before i start saying hello to everybody well actually let me say hello to everybody and then i'm going to say the one thing that i uh wanted to kind of let y'all know so hello lee he has set up for us he has got the fountain pretzels marshmallows and fruits out for everyone welcome to mystery of diamonds help yourself hello marion i know i've missed you too um hello sarah and cindy and joe um jana uh lauren mommy 214 hello i think that's a new one on me this week uh melanie canine mama hello uh thank you i will i will definitely let y'all know about him in just a minute thank you for that marcia cheryl wanda jenna sherry jessica robin tammy laura uh patricia dawn sherilyn risa linda carly cindy dorsey loves dps i think that's a new one on me too hello hello diane leona sarah ann whoops where'd it go uh jay lee lee gritchville crafty rabbit and tia hello boo and kayleen okay so that's uh oh and emma hello emma uh oh there is my bestie Kara, my bestie <laughs> um y'all i couldn't i'm telling you i would be I, I would be a total basket case if it was not for my my bestie hello deborah all right so first off i hello kim i want to uh apologize for not doing the grand prize last week um my husband had to go into the hospital um he was at the beginning stages of kidney failure uh he was septic and um all that and so uh easter easter afternoon uh as soon as we got done with with easter he was we noticed he wasn't he wasn't doing very well and so he went ahead um and uh went to the hospital and he he uh the good news he came home last night so hubby is home came home last night but i do apologize it was just it was too much for me i had, was going back and forth uh from home to the hospital and i live an hour away from the hospital um so i was going back and forth from home to the hospital uh and so monday was just it was not a it was not a i just i couldn't do it and i felt bad for letting you guys down but i just i you know it was one of those times that I, I i had i had to i had to put my family first and of course randall is just as sweet as sweet could be and totally understood um so i am just i'm so grateful for that and and most of y'all seem to have understood um and i really really appreciate it thank you tammy hello jen hey berta read your comment above Berta. i didn't see a comment above i didn't see no comment Berta. i went all the way through the thing Berta. what 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 comment we got what what comment you're gonna have to redo it because it didn't I, I don't have anything up here above um oh thank you guys y'all are so sweet thank you um <laughs> it's you know it's just it's one of those things that uh we just we didn't we didn't anticipate it and it just <laughs> it just kind of threw us for a little i'm like on easter too of all things um but right above tia i went to okay look 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 i went to okay tia let me let me find tia tia see i see tia and i don't see yours up above there Berta. I swear I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, you gonna have to redo it because on my um uh StreamYard, it's not showing me. It shows me Tia's, but there's not yours. The first time you commented that I can see on here, 
is um, the one where you said, look at the comment above. So, but for some reason, StreamYard is not showing me everything. Okay. Y'all did not come to hear me like Peter Petter, but I will say uh, real quick uh, for the grand prize, we do have to draw week four first. When we do the drawings, we're going to do week one first. I mean, week four. Y'all look, mm -hmm, I can't even keep week straight. Week four, which is a DAC gift card. Then we have a grand prize DAC gift card. We have a grand prize winner um, for a pin from um, Leopard Leather Works. It is a dragon pin. Now, I'm pretty sure it won't be purple uh, like mine is. I think it is, it'll be green. Um, hopefully, y'all can see the dragon right there. Um, I love, this is one of my favorite pins, y'all. This is one of my favorite pins i absolutely and it's upside down with the dragon but i absolutely love it Mwah, love my dragon uh then we also have two um diamond paintings that someone so graciously uh donated we have couch dragon and stolen moments and then of course the major big prize is the the original painting from randall himself all right you say technology. I, I know technology for me for, it just doesn't like me. I need to make friends with technology. I think because I, I sometimes fuss at it and, and, and I don't think it likes that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. He it just doesn't like it sometimes. Um, so, all right. Are y'all ready? Because I know I am not who, who y'all are here to see. Like, I mean, I know some of y'all do come in and y'all support me every week and I greatly appreciate y'all but we want the man of the hour we want randall so let's bring him in and Hello, there he everybody. is you, me and i'm sure everybody watching i'm sure they're telling you are thrilled that your husband is doing better we're very concerned about that and as i always said uh family comes first you know, the what I'm doing with the artwork and all is is not important at all compared to you and your family. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so as she said, this week is the final and uh, the grand prize. I keep bumping my camera here for your image shakes. All finished, framed, uh, ready to be given away uh, a little later in the hour. Signed on the back. I've also got the piece signed on the, on the artwork also. So someone will be receiving this piece. Uh, depends on who wins tonight. <clears throat> and uh, before I go too much further here, I want to say um, hello to Leslie. Uh, she works for me and works with me, really, more than for me. Uh, and uh, she does all the magic that makes so much happen in my world. And um, Emily. I've got to say hello, Emily. <laughs> and uh, as usual, each time I got to say my books, uh, the first one, The Bedtime Story, hardback, full color book. Uh, second book, D is for Draglings, ABC book, uh, full color with the Draglings. And then the third little counting book I did uh great for uh, you know a small child just learning to count numbers one through 12 little storyline that goes with it things to count on each page lots of colors going on in that piece and as you all know the coloring books the first coloring book available uh, there's a link in my website uh to amazon or just look up randall spengler coloring books on amazon the first coloring book and the second coloring book, which came out just about a month ago now. Uh, 40 images in each book. So those are both, in fact, all of this is available through my website. And uh, the hardback books are also available through Diamond Art Club. Uh, especially if you live out of the country, that's the best place to order them because I have a real trouble shipping things uh, out of the country. Um, <clears throat> unless it's say going to Canada or something. So 
what I have been working on, and every week I feel bad because I don't haven't gotten more work done, but I have put quite a bit of time into it. This is my large Halloween piece I'm working on. And uh, as you can see, uh, starting down here in the lower right, and I have been putting on layer after layer of color, watercolor and colored pencils uh, to, to get them as dark as I want and to get the colors nice and deep and rich. Uh, I've got lots of gravestones drawn in here in the cemetery, uh, mausoleum back here. Uh, the pathway is starting to show up, the two cats. So I will be working on this some more tonight and get, get some more work done on it. So that's kind of where we're at right well, now. Well, I'm, I'm loving how it's looking. It is gorgeous. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it's coming on. I, one thing I, I'll point out, and I, it's the first time I think I've ever done this, is I'm running the image, the artwork, all the way to the edge of the paper. And I always leave space around the edge. But I, you know, as I was working on it, it's kind of like, I want it to be bigger. So I just ran it all the way to the edge. Uh, of course, when I frame it, I will have to cover up just a little bit of that uh, to, to mat and frame the original piece. Um, but uh, that's, that's kind of an unusual thing for me to do, is that, so. Well, you could also, if you're running, if you're running it all the way to the edge, mm -hmm. could you do a reverse matting? Well, you could, I, I suppose the image could be mounted uh, onto a piece and then a little space around it and then start the matting. And that's a possibility that that possibly might work. I'll, I'll just kind of play with that. Uh, I think I won't, you know, if it comes in a little bit, it might be an eighth of an inch. If it comes in an eighth of an inch, that would be enough to just get it right under the edge of the mat when I frame it. <clears throat> but when I do the reproductions, the prints of it and such, it'll be the full image. And when I send the piece to Diamond Art Club and Heaven and Earth, it will be the full image that they will have. Yes. Well, I can tell you right now, we're, we are going to be, uh, and greatly anticipating, uh, you know, that one being finished so that we can all bug Diamond Art Club saying we want it. Yes. <laughs> Please yes. release it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And of course I didn't mention, and I, of course, uh, most people know this, uh, today was the, the day of the eclipse, uh, here in Kansas city, we had, they said 89%. It got kind of uh, like late evening and then started getting light together again. It didn't get totally dark. Uh, I did a, a lot of people uh, on Facebook uh, send me photos of different places they were, and some of them were where they got the full eclipse down in the middle of Arkansas. I believe Houston may have gotten a full eclipse. Um, in Montreal, someone sent an image from Montreal and said it was a full eclipse for them also, but still, still pretty strange uh to you know because it was a beautiful sunny day with no clouds at all and it just kept getting darker and darker you know i kind of felt like uh uh i don't know maybe that's the way it happens when you start to go you know <laughs> it's uh, everything gets darker and darker <laughs> i don't know yeah our our kids got disappointed because they were like they were expecting you know they're like it's the eclipse and so they're like expecting everything to go dark and and it didn't and i'm like guys we're not enough in the path that it's really going to do anything for us like you're not going to see anything drastic and they also thought that it happened like within a split second i'm like no y'all no it takes a little bit for it to go over um it does. we're not flying into hyperspace here yeah, it took, uh, I think it you know, started they think here. It, just, it covers and goes. It, it does. It started here <laughs> probably about 1230, hit its peak just before two o'clock. So about an hour and a half to go. And then probably about an hour and a half to fade away. Uh, I do have cousins yeah. uh, from California that are, that drove, uh, well, I don't know if they drove, I think they flew in to uh, some friends in Arkansas so they could see the eclipse. Well, I also saw your uh, the picture you put up on the Facebook on your Facebook page uh, to celebrate the eclipse. That is so adorable. Well, thank you, thank you. Actually, it just kind of a coincidence. I've been working on that piece, 
and uh, just recently finished it. And uh, today I was sitting there thinking, well, I, gee, I need to put something on there for the eclipse. And I looked on my phone and my photos and there it was. It's like, well, it's it was called stargazing. Today it was called eclipse gazing. Well, I, I loved it. So, um, and, and, you know, I, I will be, I will be missing getting to see you work, but I know that, uh, you'll keep us updated even after tonight on the progress on this picture. Um, and, uh, then of course, guys, you only have a, a, you only have a little bit of time to wait because the next event is July. It is, it is. And I better have this piece finished by July. Because <laughs> <laughs> we got, we'll get a new piece. Although I am telling you, I saw, it's been a little while back, but they put the picture that you had your summer picture with the draglings uh, on the beach. Oh, yes. Um, looked like they were playing with sandcastles and stuff. They oh, put right, that in the right, boat. Right. Oh, man, I was I was all over that one. Okay. All over it. <laughs> well, yes, being in Pensacola with the beach, that would definitely fit your, fit your uh, the world you live in. I, I wish I had a beach that close. Hey, Mandy. We I, I know someone who works with me. His name is Mandy. So how you doing? <laughs> Oh, Robin drove from Tennessee to Missouri to see the full eclipse. Oh, my gosh. I have never seen a full eclipse. You didn't, you didn't by any chance take, like, video or, or, or photos or something, did you, Robin? Well, I'm, hey, I'm good to Mandy, do. is that you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Mandy <laughs> she is the sweetest person y'all she is one of the sweetest per people I just I love her to death so <laughs> I'm going All to right, so. turn the, my camera around uh, so you can because I'm sitting here it's just difficult to sit here with this in front of me without wanting to draw on it I keep picking up pencils that's why I'm looking down here because I'm grabbing pencils and drawing on this thing uh, so let me turn the camera around <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing and we can get on with this. And uh, in a little while, we'll be doing the drawing for all the pieces. So I have to turn the camera to the other side, though. Uh -huh. Here we go. Camera, front camera to the back camera. Okay. You can see it's still a nice, nice sunny day out here. And oh yeah yours is, you're still light outside mine is it's not light out here <laughs> you know and that's amazing we're in the same time zone uh then that it is uh you know dark there and and uh light here and uh you know this time zone goes all the way to the western uh border of kansas so out there it's even low oh. yes it's a huge time zone can I get this in a good, I'm getting a shadow here for some reason. I think I arranged my, my upper lighting a little different than I had done it before. It's causing a little bit of shadow there at the edge, but I think, ah, there we go. Now you Hello, Miss Lola. Oh, there they are. So, okay. So what I've been doing here, uh, as I said before, if if you were watching, I like to do my watercolor first and then my colored pencils on top and then back and forth and back and forth and just build up the layers stronger and stronger. So a lot of this pathway with the little stones and such, the grasses here, those are and the grasses down here in the corner. Uh, those are all watercolor. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit and see if that'll help with the... With the uh, Amount there you go because you only see the shadow on the very bottom you're all good okay and there, now you can actually see a little more of the picture by pulling the camera back and you can see the other junk on my drawing table too so okay <laughs> but anyway so these uh uh these this is watercolor just put in as a base color and what i'll be doing is i go into my colored pencils and uh just start 
I mean, here, drawing blades of grass, dark lay, uh, blades, uh, just filling in all the spaces to give it some texture and some movement. And then after I get uh, enough dark blades put in there, every once in a while, I will use a light, bright, uh, yellow green and put in some light blades of grass down here. So I'll be doing a lot of that. And in areas where I have the pumpkins uh, already drawn in and, and very heavy paint and colored pencil on top of it, like right in here, if I want a blade of grass to go over, you can see the pencils don't really go over it too well. If I push it hard enough and kind of push it a little bit, you get a little bit there. In areas like that, what I will do uh, when I get pretty much finished with this piece will be mix some uh, opaque white or use a little bit of gouache and go in there with an opaque paint to do some little strokes uh, of a of a color that will actually be on top of the darker areas because it is very difficult if I had all these blades of grass drawn in to draw and shade <laughs> the pumpkin around the blades of grass. <laughs> It's much easier oh, to put them in on top. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So you just kind of have to use use what's available we have a, to work. We have a question for you. Um, yeah. Tia, Tia's Crazy Craft Addiction says, does Randall mix his own colors or just use the palette of colors that comes with his paints? I, uh, I use, <clears throat> well, I start with the palette of colors. <laughs> Excuse me. I use uh, Winsor Newton uh, watercolors that come in little little bitty tubes, and um, and I had one out here last week, and I think I put it away in my box. But anyway, uh, and I put them out in my tray, and they dry and harden. So so then I had to add water to them as I want to use them. Uh, what I do then is mix those colors together to come up with all these different shades of greens, light greens, dark greens, oranges. Uh -huh. uh, I, I just mix them up and, and just come up with a whole variety of colors. I have kind of a white, uh, We're not uh, a, a white dinner plate here that I uh, mix my colors on. And once it gets all messed up with enough paint, then I take it into the sink and wash it off and start over. Now imagine with watercolor, that's got to be at least a a, a benefit because like at least if, if watercolor dries out, you can just add water to reactivate it. Oh, yes. yes. Not quite so much with the other types of paints. <laughs> if the other yeah, types of paints, yeah. if acrylic or oil dry out, you're just out of luck. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So as you can see, I'm get, just starting getting some pre preliminary blades of grass. A lot of it is just to give the the feel of grass, the texture. Uh, by the time I'm finished, like the top blades here, you'll see the individual blades of grass. Uh, if I need to, I will go back in with a, a dark color and, and just sharpen up the little edges of them to make them, to make them uh, fit. And I want you to notice uh, these nice colored pencil or pencil holders for those little bitty sections of pencil that are kind of too hold uh too small to hold on to and i wish i had written down the lady's name but she knows who she is that sent these to me and they are absolutely wonderful i use them all the time i can use every little bit of pencil now yes I say we, we love the fact that people are showering you with love because we just want more artwork. So if that means, you know, getting you what you need to to get them on there, I mean, like, oh, yeah. And I love how I can see the knots and the, the texture in the tree as well. Like that is yes. amazing. Yeah. Well, that's the fun part. And that's that's where the colored pencils really come in uh, up here. I have started doing watercolor. This is just watercolor right up in here. And I do some streaks and some lines with it. Uh, but once you start adding the colored pencils on top, uh, you can really get some character and, and texture to the tree. And I love the big old knots. And, uh, you know, by the time this thing is finished, there may be a couple little eyes back in the in the tree knots looking out because it is Halloween. Oh. It's, it needs some kind of spooky things happening. 
So, and, oh, I love it. I love it. And on these trees, uh, hello, Catherine. To to get some of these darker areas and darker lines, I use uh, various shades of brown, uh, uh, the watercolors, and then the pencils. But then to really get the areas even darker. I'll go in with like an indigo blue on top of the brown. And that really gives you some really deep, rich colors in some of these areas also. So, hey, Randall. Yes. I just found out who gave you those pencil lengtheners. Oh, yes. It was Catherine Anna Hauserman. Okay. She got you I'm the pencil lengthener. She says she's glad that you get good use out of them. Yes. You know, and now that you said the name, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember her name. <laughs> yes, I use them and they are, like I say, they're absolutely wonderful. I'm getting a lot more use out of these little these <laughs> little pieces of pencil that are hard to hang on to. <laughs> and I got a lot of them. So, okay. So, and <clears throat> anyway, um, and last week I was working on the draglings and adding color and I have added so many layers to these because I want, the, I want them to, to be very dark. Any, um, anything in the foreground here, and that's another way to help show depth, is the darks are very dark, the lights are very light. The more contrast uh, there is, the, the closer it brings the objects to you. Like if this draggling was way up here somewhere, the darks on him wouldn't be as dark as they are here in the foreground. The highlights on him wouldn't be as, as highlighted. Uh, and you'll notice that if you, if you think about that just in real life, just looking out the window, you'll see that the objects in your house where you're looking out the window are very dark. And what is a dark tree, a dark tree trunk, you know, across the yard, appears very dark, but if you compare it to your window frame or something dark in your house, you'll see that the things closest to you are the darkest. And then the trees a little bit further away are slightly lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's that's another way uh, to really get a lot of depth in your pictures is, is to follow that, um, that rule. Okay. And Cindy said, when you started, did you use just watercolors or colored pencils? And if so, when did you combine them? Like when you first started, did you instantly know watercolor was the way you wanted watercolor and color pencils was the way you wanted to go? Or did you start with a different medium before transitioning? Well, you know, um, of course, in school, you you try all mediums. That's what school is about. It You kind of experiment with all kinds of things. I always like watercolors. Uh, so I use them uh, a lot, but I also like drawing a lot and somewhere, and this would have started, I think back when I was in the Navy and we won't say how many years ago that was, but I started drawing with a uh, ball, very fine point ball pen, ballpoint pens. They were, uh, uh, I think they were a Bic pen, extremely fine point and you could draw on paper with them and it almost looked like a pencil drawing because you'd have just little strokes and this and that and then I would tint that with a little bit of watercolor and give it uh give it just a little bit of color and I did that for a few years and each you know and over the years I kept adding more and more watercolor and then I met this uh, artist here in town that used colored pencils and she gave me some colored pencils to try and I fell in love with them and I have been putting colored pencils on top of the I start putting colored pencils on top of the ink drawing and the watercolor and I got to a point where I was putting so much color on the paper <clears throat> the ink drawing was totally covered up so I thought well this is useless to sit there and do all the shading and everything with the pens and then cover it all up so now I do what I do here, just the pencil sketch and then the watercolor to start giving like this is just watercolor here. Start giving me some shading and then the colored pencils on top of that. So it's it's I've just progressed over the years to this point. It's not like I, I can ever tell you, what Cheryl. I <laughs> Cheryl totally agrees. She says the way that the light is on the image 
that you have now makes those jack-o'-lantern faces glow. And well, they really do. To. I mean, just, to. just with what you've done. I, I tried to get them. I've been trying to get them darker and darker and darker, but still have shape. And I will probably still do more on them. I did go in on their eyes and nose and mouth with some opaque white uh, mixed with a very light yellow. And I painted in the brightest parts. And then I took a lemon, kind of a bright, um, well, this is a canary yellow, uh, just around the edges of it to just kind of give it a, you know, kind of a yellowish glow in there, you know, because it doesn't, even though there's light in there, it wouldn't be just bright white light, it, you know, because the inside of a pumpkin is is kind of warm and yellowish. So I want it to glow, but I want it to be, uh, have that little bit of a yellow tinge around the edge of it. So. Right. Okay. I'm forgetting where I was at. I was back up on this straggling up here. Uh, doing more shading with the colored pencils. Now, I, and I mentioned each time, my I'm keeping in mind, my light source is this little lantern right here, which I think I'm going to go in with a, a rather, not, not a black, but a, a dark gray, and just kind of draw that lantern out. Some sections of it there. <clears throat> and uh, that way we can see right where the lantern's going to be. And I already did put a little, I just took my yellow uh, colored pencil and uh, drew in for the lantern. The light will be showing through the lantern there, just to kind of show where the light source is. So here we go with a, eh, kind of have to just make up what you want your lantern to look like. And then it will have a handle here that'll be in the draggling's hand there. And the top of the lantern will be darker. So this this is the light source. And of course, before it's finished, I'll probably I'll go in with black and, and sharpen up the edges of it and maybe add a little details to it a little more. But uh, that makes it easy to know where your light's coming from. So when you're doing shading here on the this draggling, the back side of them over here is going to be the darkest. So I just keep putting on layers and layers of colored pencils and building it up. That's that's why these drawings take so long. But that's also why they're so good. Well, thank thank you. It's it's kind of uh, just the only way I know how to do it. <laughs> Aaron, you're not late. Mommy214 says, is it going to be an acorn lantern? You know, what a good thought. I had not planned on it being an acorn lantern, but it's probably not too late to change it. I mean, I just did, uh, you know, on the giveaway piece, there's an acorn lantern. Why didn't I, you know, I, I, I do that many times. I'll just be drawing and drawing and drawing, and then I'll stand back and look at it and go, well, gee, why didn't I do this? Or why didn't I do that? <laughs> I, I start critiquing my artwork uh, even before it's finished, um, which is always a, oh, wow. a dangerous, dangerous thing to do because there are times I critique it to a point that's like, I don't think I want to finish this one, <laughs> which is not a good thing to do. I <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea. Be like, okay, I keep, I keep questioning this one. Let me put it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a great idea. And it's not too late for me to change that to an acorn ladder because it'd be generally about the same shape. I'll just do a little thing there and a little thing there. Great idea. I'm glad somebody, I'm glad you thought of that. I wish it would have been about two or three minutes earlier and I wouldn't have already drawn in the framework around it. But. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's okay okay i won't i won't redraw that at the moment because that's just going to be kind of correcting things um right but you'll see the the other thing i do and i always do this i'm just terrible about uh jumping and working all over um my drawing with different colors so here all i went from 
doing shading with greens. Now I've got dark brown in my hand and I almost need my holder on this one. I've got a bigger version of this dark brown somewhere. Um, but I just like to keep grabbing colors and just doing a little work here and a little work there. And eventually it all comes together. A little bit of shading down there. So this is the now I have a question myself. Do you have a favorite part of a draggling that you like coloring? Like the eyes or the mouth or the breastplate or mm. you know, do you like have a favorite that like you always look forward to doing? Probably just the face. I love doing the faces. I love doing the eyes. In fact, why don't I just change gears? Oh, by the other way, the new ex most exciting thing I did today was I went out and I bought a new pencil sharpener. I've been telling you oh. how I've been using a, a exact or a little knife to sharpen my pencils because my great exacto pencil mm -hmm. sharpener of 20 or 30 years old finally quit so i went down to the art supply store and i got a new exacto pencil sharpener and it just works like a dream look at the points on that thing it does not break them off oh it's, it's look quiet. at that it's it's the most wonderful thing it's i'm just thrilled to have a new pencil sharpener <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you, sometimes it's just the small things, but they make a big difference. They really do. It's like when you're painting with watercolors or painting with anything. Uh, and if you do a lot of it, you just use the same brushes over and over and over. And before you know it, years go by. Your brushes lose hairs. They get dull. They kind of lose their points. And you don't really realize it until you go out and buy a brand new brush. And you start using it and go, oh, my gosh, why didn't I do this a long time ago? Uh, so uh, let's see. I was just about getting, okay, I'm going to go up here to the face and start working on the eyes. Because I think this guy is going to be kind of, since he's the only one that you can see his face and his eyes, let's get it drawn in a little more. It's uh, it's very his face is very small because it's a big picture and the draggling is not very big. I usually draw their faces bigger than this. Now this is uh, Dagmar here. She's going to have a little flowered wreath around her uh, around her ears here on top of her head because she's got little fairy wings on. She's dressed up as a fairy for Halloween. <laughs> little nostrils. And, and I, I just love to take a sharp yep. and do, do nice, sharp, crisp edges on everything. Oh, I bet that is satisfying, being able to do that sharpness. Tia asks, do you create your outdoors by observing perspective or do you freehand images along a roadway? Well... Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean there, but I, I like on this one, uh, I just kind of knew I wanted a house up here. I started there with drawing in a house and I knew I wanted a roadway that kind of went down this way and a tree that went up that way. Uh, so I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Uh, one of the things I have run into and I'll kind of show you what I was doing, the scale of the characters compared to the house and all. Uh, the draglings are very small, about the size of cats. Uh, that's why the cats, you know, if it was a person standing here, the cats would look very small. But they're, the cats are further up the road, so they get a little smaller as they go up the road. So all these things are about the same size. But in reality, the draglings are going to be very tiny when they get up to this house. Uh, and then as I was drawing the roadway in, and the tombstones and stuff, I thought, you know, it doesn't feel like the house is far enough away for it to to translate from this size of a draggling up to there. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. But anyway, uh, so what I've decided to do as I was drawing in the cemetery here, you may see there's a little line coming through here. There's going to be kind of a ridge, a little a little hill to where the cemetery is on a hill. It goes up, up here and then down a little valley and then up there. So the, sim the tombstones are gonna jump from 
uh, you know, about this size up here and beyond this little ridge, see the tombstones are much smaller because they're, there's a little hill there and, and they're going further away. So I need to carry that down across the roadway here also. And by the time I'm finished, this part of the roadway here, I will probably narrow this down a little bit more to make it, and then this part is wider. So it'll make it look like the roadway kind of goes over this little hill and then comes up there a bit further away, creating another layer of depth and distance in the picture by, by doing these little, little hills and, and ridges and such. So... Well, you've definitely gotten to mention, like, I absolutely love, I, I don't know how, I don't know how y'all do it, but like on that um, gravestone where you can see, it looks like that bottom part, like there's a, uh, like a recess in it. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, that's just a matter I mean, that of, just gives uh, it so much depth and dimension. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be, you know, that I, I'm kind of thinking, hmm. Uh, it gets a little tricky sometimes when you got these different light sources because I have a light source right here for these characters. Then you've got a light source up here, which will be the full moon. And then, uh, you know, sometimes I just kind of do what I feel like doing. And I, I just, it looks like I have a light coming from this direction onto these tombstones. Um, but uh, as I work on it more, um, I'll probably get that figured out a little better <laughs> i i anyway. love it i just i think it already has dimensionality yes well that's that's kind of the goal the more i work down here the more i can start to see what's happening up here and it helps me determine how dark to make the areas because I will, uh, I start drawing in a little bit of grass with colored pencils around the tombstones. I will darken in this part of the grass in, in here. Um, and then I will probably move on up to this section of grass, which will be uh, a little lighter, a little, a little duller, a little more grayed rather than just light or green. It'll be more of a gray green because it's going off in the distance and it's, the colors are just aren't as intense. And then as they go across the road, they'll be even a little more, uh, you know, a little less green than here. Um, and then uh, there will be fall leaves I will put in on top of the grass and such also. Uh, but, but starting in one point and moving forward just helps me figure out the right coloring and the right intensity to draw everything. Um, so the house will be very detailed when I get to it, but it won't be super strong colors uh, down like I have down here. It'll probably be, um, oh, I don't know, I'm a little more all, uh, overall brownish gray to make it look like a haunted house. And then I will have lights on. Uh, in some of the windows and such. You've got to make it look a, a bit spooky and such. I keep getting distracted here. Well, I, it's already looking amazing. I love the fact that you chose cobblestone um, for the pathway. Well, yes, it kind of gives it, a, you know, a, a bit of a, a bit more character. And uh, it's kind of a, just a fun, fun way to make it... Uh, more Halloween feel to it. <laughs> now down at the bottom here, I can see his chin here. It's come out quite far enough there. And there. And these are the tops of their ears sticking up above, above all these little flowers here. I think I'm going to jump right into his eyes. Uh, the eyes are always fun to put in there. I need to find my my black. I do have this thing I've noticed in my box of colored pencils, which is I have two boxes full of colored pencils like that. And then I have a set of 60 colored pencils, which I mentioned I just picked up in an estate sale a couple weeks ago. So I've got colored pencils all over the place here. And it seems like every time I'm looking for a 
black colored pencil, all I can find is indigo blue. And every time I'm looking for indigo blue, all I can find is black. I don't know why it works like that. <laughs> okay, so here's, a, oh, now here I said my new pencil sharpener is wonderful. I just sharpened it and my pencil point is wobbly in here. So it broke. It oh, broke I do hate when it does that. Okay, there we go. That's much better. So this dragon, this is Dagmar. She's going to be uh, very nervous about going to this haunted house. So you can see this is going to be the black part of her eye. And she's kind of looking back like, what is that? I heard a noise behind me. I'm not quite sure what it is. So I draw her the black parts and see, you can tell, you can just see the difference it makes to start drawing the eyes in. All of a sudden, there's some, some personality and some character coming in there just by doing the black parts of the eyes. And then uh, they both have, they're both blue eyes. So I do a little bit of blue around here. And I even do a little bit of shading on the blue areas, too. Whether it's a little lighter in the middle and a little darker on the edges. And another blue here. I know this is very tiny, tedious stuff. You know, I always admire the artists that do these uh, um, live uh, painting events and they've got big brushes and they're making total wonderful effects like you know in five minutes there's a sky and there's clouds and there's trees and and i'm drawing in an area that's about a quarter of an inch big and uh making an eyeball but you know what that's what's amazing about art is that there's so many different styles out there and you know different styles resonate with different people like you know i i have watched someone who is a you know a watercolor artist that doesn't do any lines right it's all i guess it's someone in the chat said it's like a no line watercolor but they oh, don't yeah. put any pencil on top of it it's just the so it looks more i guess dreamy-esque like because it's very yes. light like there's oh, not yeah. as much and then that's you know that's a very different style then you know i even someone was uh telling me that it wasn't really art but i disagree tattoo artists the tattoos are oh artwork yeah. yes i've seen some amazing <laughs> tattoos i don't have a tattoo i think i'm a little from the wrong generation to to you know and i feel like at this point in life i've got enough weird things growing on my body anyway without adding tattoos to it <laughs> you know you get a few moles and <laughs> things here and there it's like oh. so anyway um, uh, jennifer i do believe the blue dragon uh on dragon brigade is that one rupert that's rupert yes yes yeah. i don't put him in very many pieces but he's in a few and see here. Wanda, I hate so you were at the place where there was an earthquake. So I hope everything was turned out okay. That was that would scare me. I've never I've been in a hurricane, tornado, never a hurt earthquake. I don't know. I I would ooh, mm -mm. okay. That would scare me. <laughs> yes, I think so, but you know. <laughs> Tornadoes aren't much fun either. So no, mm -mm. I don't know. it's all especially when you don't have any basement to go into. Well, yeah, See, that's what I'm. I'm like, <laughs> like, there's no basement. There's no basement. <laughs> that you know what would scare me about the basement is where do I put all my stuff? Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what basements are for to put stuff in. Actually, that's where I am now. Uh, fortunately, my, my house is on kind of a side of a hill, so my basement has got a walk outdoor and big windows in it, but I am uh -huh. here. Oh, well, nice. Well, that means that if you're in the middle of a tornado, well, you got your art right there. You can just... 
Well, yeah, yeah, we could draw it out. On, we could continue on with the uh, with the event, even if it was a tornado going over. Uh, so. <laughs> okay, so you can kind of see uh, Dagmar starting to come alive here. You know, she's gotten some personality there, and she's she's kind of getting some eyes, and I'm going to put a little bit of trying to get the lighting right too because the light's right there. And so this little, their, their cheeks, these big tan cheeks where I put their little warts are gonna be there. And then uh, a little bit of shading underneath it. And the little bit of shading on the back side of the ears here. And, uh, um, Catherine, no, I, I know that not all of the draglins have D names. I mean, a lot of them do. Um, and the uh, there's only there's only one blue one that that I know of that has a name, yes, and that's Rupert. Yeah. But well, the, the the ones that really don't have names uh, right now are the teacup dragons, which I talked about last time I had an event. Uh, yeah, and I haven't really focused on them much to to try to do anything with that. Oh yes, and then you have Eldar. Eldar is yeah. one of my favorites, Eldar. Yeah. He's he's the big old uh, like grandfather dragon, yes. So, okay. And yeah, Hurricane, that's right Mandy. Hurricane, you get some warning at least. Oh, hurricane yeah. party. I've never been to hurricane party. I, my my hurricane party was running as fast as I could. Uh, uh, to get out of the outside while my husband's just like dancing around out in the yard. I'm like, you've lost your mind. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty terrifying too. Uh -oh. I, agree. I agree. He was out there. He wanted to sit out in like rocking chairs and just watch it. I'm like, there are trees whipping around, honey. He's like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and I'm like, did you get hit already? Did did it did it already knock some <laughs> sense out of you? I mean, like get out. <laughs> oh, Rupert could get a sister. That'd be cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you can kind of see. There is Dagmar. Oh, look at her face. Oh. Little, little eyes and. Now I don't have the little warts on her cheek yet. I'll I'll get to that. That'll take some. Yeah, you know, she only gets four of them. I'll do a little. This is a cream colored pencil. I'll do four little dots back here, and then on each her, dot. Her little eyelashes. Uh, oh yes, I haven't got to the eyelashes yet. Yes. Um, behind the dots, you need. Oh, she's so precious. Bit of, little bit of shading behind the dots too. All every, every tiny, tiny little details you do have to do on this just to make it right. But um, okay, that's a little better. Eyelashes. Huh? Let's see if I can get a nice sharp pencil here and put in. Couple little eyelashes there. There's two little eyelashes. Oh, look at her. And I put actually, I'm going to use a little bit of black. I just don't have a thing for Dagmar. She's just so precious. <laughs> she is. She is. Okay. And a little bit of eyelashes there on that side. And then I like to put a little, little black ridge around the inside edge of the eyelid there too. It just kind of ties the eyelashes together and makes the eyes kind of pop out a little bit more. So there she is. And a little bit oh. of black for the nostrils. So you can see now all of a sudden she's she's got some personality going there. So yeah. That's my favorite. And this part. may sound really strange, but whenever I see one of your paintings, especially with, you know, each of the different characters, you know, I, 
I, I start feeling, you know, like when you read a book and you start really getting into the characters and you care about them. And the same goes for your characters. Like I just, I care about them and I, I love seeing them. <laughs> it's just like, oh, there they are. Well, they, you know, they're, they're, uh, they've got their own little personalities, just like if you've got dogs or cats. They're each got their own little personality, their likes and dislikes, and, and all of that. So, what am I looking for here? Hmm. Goodness, Randall, you already have people trying to name a sister for Rupert. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. we, we, we had uh, Rupert with a sister, Ruby. And then Berta said Rupert's sister could be called Treeper, which is Rupert backwards. Really? R U P E R E. Huh. T R E P U R Treeper. <laughs> well, it's definitely a unique <laughs> name that probably you wouldn't find anyone else using. Uh, that's that's an interesting I'm pretty thought. sure. <laughs> But Ruby's if someone kind of else has a dragon too. out there called Teeper, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Ruby's a good name, too, because, yeah, Rupert well, and Ruby, or Rupert and Treeper, right? both work, yes. Yes. So, Randall, we only have four minutes left, so we need to oh, draw our winners. Long. I can't believe it. Look, it just flies. I feel like I haven't done hardly anything to this piece, but no, no, can, you have just given goes to life. Failure. Well, yes, uh, Dagmar is really coming alive now here. And uh, it just goes to show how long these artwork pieces take. It just take uh, weeks and months on these pieces. So You know, okay. and that's a good thing because, you know, sometimes people go, goodness gracious, you know, especially an original, you know, they're like, that might be a little expensive, but look how much time and energy and effort and time that it takes to do these. It's not like it's whipped out in a day. It, it really does. And, and yeah. an art, an artists that, uh, you know, maybe a Picasso or such can, can get massive amounts of money for their originals. But, uh, you know, the, the amount of money you even get, even though it's an expensive piece for an original, still a lot of times doesn't work out to very much per hour. Uh, the way artists make a lot of money with their artwork and their images is reproducing it. You know, I sell my prints on my, on my mm -hmm. website and that's really where you make a lot of, you make most of your money and then licensing the images for products, you know, uh, diamond art paintings, uh, cross stitch puzzles and, and various things. So that's, that's kind of what we have to do to, to make it work. Exactly. Well, that's why I love doing these events specifically that, you know, spotlight, you know, my favorite artist and, and, you know, other artists is because, you know, I think it's so important to, you know, to celebrate these artists that have given us such amazing paintings that we get to do. Cause you know, we get to, we get to bring the little draglings home and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will say I have loved everybody's, paintings i have loved i've loved the drawings that i've seen that some people oh, have yes. done me too um, it, it's amazing that's kind of the idea of this is to inspire people to just create and do whatever you do it doesn't matter just just do it and do your diamond art painting your cross stitch uh the coloring book pages all of it and just just enjoy it all right so i'm going to go ahead and come back okay. in I'm going to turn this camera around uh -huh. so we can do this drawing. Front camera. Okay, here we go. And okay, we sorry. Are. My face was just right there because it, it was, <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> woo, that was too close for comfort for me. <laughs> um, okay, so the first one that we've got to do is our week four winner, which is a $50 gift card to DAC. Um, so, the numbers that you have to choose from. Hold on. I don't know if it's okay to be on the screen. I don't. I don't know. We got to. I'm scared. Well, I'm trying to show you really quickly before I take it over to Papa. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. Ah! Oh. Oh yeah. No, let's not. Mm -mm. Well, you don't have to be a nope. I love it though. Did good. Okay, so we have from number three twenty-seven 
to three ninety nine. Okay. Let's do three sixty four. Three sixty four. That is Mary Ann. Oh, I don't know if I can say this. Kowalchuk. If you're in the chat and I have butchered your name, I'm so sorry. Um, but Mary Ann, congratulations. Congratulations. See, DAC gift card. Yes, yes. That's a $50 gift card. That's great. So that was week four. All right. right. Week four gift. I mean, uh, that was good. week four. Okay. I'm going up and putting it in here now. And I'm going to, okay, and then, whoa, what did I just do? I just did something that I didn't like. No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Computers. I'm telling you. So, congratulations. I have no idea if Mary Ann is in the chat, uh, but if you are, congratulations. If not, hopefully you'll see this, and congratulations. You need to contact me. Everybody that wins, please, please contact me uh, with you know, your email address for the DAC, uh, for the pen and the paintings, all of those, uh, I will need your address that it needs to be shipped to. Yes. All right. So the next prize that we're going to give out is a pen, the pen from Leopard Leatherworks. They were sweet enough to donate that to us. So now that means since we're now on to the grand prizes, we have from number one down to three ninety nine. Okay, let's say, uh, gosh, how about two fourteen? Okay, two fourteen. All right, so two fourteen is sylvia brannon sylvia brannon congratulations congratulations sylvia. let's see this is the pen i'm having to copy and paste here so i can have my list up here so sylvia brannon Please get up with me. I uh, need your address for sure to send that to Leopard Leatherworks. Oh, thank you, Miss Lola. That is so sweet that you did a super sticker. Thank you. That means so much to me. You just have no idea. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to give away Couch Dragon. Oh, no. <laughs> oh it's upside down. <laughs> Couch Dragon, I uh, know it's, you can't really see it, but Couch Dragon, which is a round 89 by 46, it is still in the plastic. When they donated, they left it in the plastic for us. Okay, so once again, from one to 399. Okay, let's go with 187. 187. Okay, so 187 is Kimberly Dorsey Cole. Woo! Congratulations. Kimberly, Kimberly Dorsey Cole. Congratulations. Let's see. Let me color that one. And this is the. Okay. Do -do -do. All right, and then the next one is going to be for the painting Stolen Moments. This one is a square, Stolen Moments, where it's like you're in a little yeah. bubble bath there reading yes. the book. Yes. By candlelight. Yes. Taking a few little stolen moments to just relax and unwind. Yes, Dagmar likes her bubble bath. All right. Uh, that would be number <laughs> 62. 62? Yes. 
62. 62 is Katie Albright. Katie Albright. Congratulations, Katie. It's either Katie or Caddy, because it was C A T T I E, I think. But congratulations. Yes, congratulations, Katie or Caddy, whichever. All right. Sorry, it's taking me a second just to paste these just so that I have them all organized. All right, we've only got two prizes left to go. Was anybody in the chat that has won so far? I don't see them. Okay. So the next one, the next to last is the... Uh, another $50 gift card to Diamond Art Club. This is the final Diamond Art Club gift card. Okay. Let's do number 302. Okay. Hold on, 302. Computer, work with me. So 302 is Jessica Ruitt. Oh, Dorsey. Hey, Kimberly. Dorsey's in the house. So Kimberly, congratulations. You won the Couch Dragon painting. Woo, woo. All right, so this one was... Where did she go? Hold on. <laughs> Jessica Ruitt won the $50 DAC gift card. That's a great gift. Yes. That is, y'all. Ooh. -hoo. Although this next, the last prize is the granddaddy of them all. The, the top of the top, the ace of the ace, the one that everybody <laughs> wants. Okay. And that is, do you want to, before we, before we pick the number, you want to show them the picture again? There it is, right? Get it without reflections. It's so difficult here with the opera. There we go. That's the original drawing. Back. This one, instead of putting wire to hang it, it's got a little stand so you can just set it up. Set it anywhere. Anyway. All right. So y'all, this is the big one. This is the big one. The number is one of my favorite numbers, and that is number 12. Number 12. All right. Number 12 is Brenda Stein. Brenda Hartstein. Congratulations, Hartstein. Brenda. Congratulations. Now, I am going to say this. Couple of things. Um, if it is something that we are mailing off to you, first off, any of the prizes, I'm not going to hunt you down. So I need you, if you are not in the live tonight, um, you know, someone reach out to them, say, hey, you might want to go watch the live. Because if I have not heard from these winners from tonight, if I have not heard from them, by next week, I am going to do a redraw. Okay. Um, so please, please, please. And also, if it is something that is being shipped, um, you know, if you are out of country, I, I might have to have your help um, with shipping just because it's a little crazy, but I will, I will work something out with y'all. Um, and and I will original be... Paint. I'm I uh, uh, Brandy ships hers from Florida. I will be shipping the original uh, to whoever wins it, and and I will cover the shipping on the original. So so whoever wins that wouldn't won't have to think about that though. See, he is so sweet. He is. I'm telling you, y'all. Artists are just amazing, especially this one, my favorite. <laughs> Well, I can't believe that that is, I mean, I knew our event was already over, but like 
you know, the final bell had not rung until until now. But um, number I'm one, I want to thank all of you guys for participating and supporting Randall and just showing uh, him and the Draglins some love. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also loved seeing the, you know, all different kinds of his paintings. You know, I loved seeing the dog bookshelf. I loved seeing the cat Christmas tree and which I, I didn't get that one. Oh, I got the dog tree though. And look at this. Like we got an opportunity to see this started and we got to have input. That was the coolest thing. Oh, it was having, you. uh, yes. I've been <laughs> some here. Input on the painting. I've been playing. I'm already starting to turn it into an acorn lamp. <laughs> look at that. I can't stand it. An acorn lamp, I, I have to. I have to draw on it, so I can't stand it to have it lay, sitting here and doing nothing. So I'm <laughs> while, while we're giving the awards away, I'm working on the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys anyway. so much for participating. Thank you, Randall, for um, you know taking time out of your schedule to come oh. and uh, sh you know share time with us, share your artwork with us, you know. We just love watching you draw and create because we just, it's just, it's amazing more than you can ever uh, imagine. Well, thank, thank and, you, you know, and I, I absolutely love it. Uh, and it's, and like I say, it's helped me tremendously. Uh, the suggestions have helped uh, tremendously, like the acorn lamp tonight. Why didn't I think of that? I just drew an acorn lamp. So <laughs> sometimes I need someone to just say, do it that way and it'll be better. And it is so. Well, I definitely appreciate everybody. And remember, you don't have to wait long for the next event because the next event is Draglins and Books, which will be in July. Yes. Um, I am going to be talking about it, uh, trying to get it out there. I want to get it advertised, you know, let people let people know, get, you know, start thinking now, what do you want to do? What? And remember there's, there's multiple, you, if you are a, we've already had people in here. If you are a colorer, a cross stitcher, a diamond painter, and you wanted to enter in all three, the world's the limit. Um, but all right. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us. It is been a pleasure as always so i'm gonna leave you like i always do reach for the stars grab hold hold on and never let go until the next time bye guys bye see you in a few months